Hi everyone! Today we're gonna go through my latest addition to my Etsy shop and it is this reading log spreadsheet or book tracking spreadsheet, personal library spreadsheet, whatever you want to call it. Here it comes. Wow, I love it. It's, it's a masterpiece. If you are interested in buying it, I will link it down below in the description of the video. And we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. As for setup, this will be pretty easy and straightforward because this spreadsheet, of course, it comes with instructions and it says right here, white areas are to be edited, deleted, add whatever you want or rewrite whatever you don't like. As you can see, the spreadsheet already comes with pre-filled and pre-loaded categories or attributes that you might want to track. And here is basically where you edit anything you want. Um, if you want to add something, just start typing like so. If you want to remove something, then you remove it. So, so this is how it goes, really. This is where you set everything up. Here you can also edit the tags, uh, because even though you have plenty of categories and attributes to track, you might want to add something that you like. Like, uh, like right here, vacation read or weekend reads. You might want to categorize your books like so. So if we go to the dashboard, I will go back to it uh, later on, but if you go to the dashboard, you can see it's pretty detailed and you have monthly and yearly tracking of books. But let's go to the reading log tab first and see what we can do here. Here, there's just a tiny arrow that when you click on it will give you a pop-up menu, a drop-down window rather, and you choose an image you like. You can change the banner and you can also go back to setup here. And if you go all the way to the right, you can insert, delete the image you don't like and insert one you actually like. Now how to do it. You delete it and then when you're in the cell you go to insert, image, image and cell and then you browse your computer, you select the image that you want to select and here you go you have an image in the cell. Now if you go back to the reading log and click on the image, let's say it was number five, it will change it all the way. Anyway, here's the reading log. You can choose to use any of these categories and you can also choose not to use them at all. It is completely and entirely up to you. The spreadsheet will work regardless whether you decide to track all of it, some of it, or, you know, it's totally up to you. So let's say you want to add something new. Here you will put the title of the book, the author, genre, subgenre. They are already pre-filled, as I said, so there's plenty that you already have here, but you can always go back to set up and add more. This here says whether, whether you own the book or it's borrowed, once you click on borrowed, you will see that this cell will turn white and it is so you can put the date on by which you need to take it back basically, whether it's to a friend or maybe you still go to a library. And now obviously source, physical ebook, audiobook or combination, you choose this, whether it's a series, if it is a series, uh, you will again have white cells right here and you type the type of series it is. You have plenty to choose from again. And the name of the series. If you don't see it here, well then you go back to setup and go to series I would like to read or am reading at, at this moment. Type it in here. Let's do XXX as an example. And now here it is in the drop down menu. It is so the filter works flawlessly, but you can 
just start typing here. It is easier though to prevent any misspellings to go to your setup page and actually put it there because if you have many books in the series and you misspell just one tiny thing, the filter will not work here. Okay, we'll change that to what we actually have there. Now you can track how much uh, the book actually costs and the overall spend that you have on books and reading in general. So you can type in a price. Let's, let's say this one was $8. And uh, you may have sold the book later on, but let's, let's say we just purchased the book today here I will put in today's date which is not February but March 8th I will put in today's date it will stay there and if I choose to sell it later for let's say four dollars I will type in four in this cell right here and choose a different date the spreadsheet will be smart enough to recognize which transaction is which based on whether you put the amount you sold it for or whether you only have the cost amount here. Anyhow, let's move on to pages. Um, pages. With pages, you simply type in the total pages or the total amount of hours. If it's an audiobook, let's say this one is 600 pages. And of course, you want to track how much you have actually read, which let's say I'm on page 37 so far. Here you will see automatically the progress bar will adjust accordingly. Oh, speaking of which, if you see anywhere in the spreadsheet this little F symbol or F the, the letter, it indicates that below that it is a function that is not to be deleted and it's automated. You don't have to fill out anything, it will be automatically calculated. This is, you can also track the date you started reading it, and the date you finished it. Actually, the date you finished it is pretty important because it will then reflect on the dashboard. Here are your tags. If I want to keep this one for my vacation, I will use the vacation read. I, I can also tag in a new author that I'm reading, I'm trying. I can also say this one is a priority. Again, you can always go back to set up and add more tags that you want to track or you want to use as filters. And back here, of course, you have the rating. You can rate it um, one to five stars. The reason I only have one to five stars and there are no half stars is because this star symbol is actually a text and if it's a text symbol then I can use a filter function on it. If it's just an image I cannot use a filter function. However, if you do want to have half stars just drop me a message. I have a workaround around it. I'll just put numbers and, and, and a symbol of a star and the filter will actually work. Anyway, for more detailed ratings you can use the Copile rating system. So you can actually rate, um, here you can really see it. You can actually rate any, any part of the book, like character would say eight, atmosphere was seven, writing style was five for me, plot was nine though, and so on and so on. And again, as you can see here, you have the little F, function or the F symbol. So that means a function is there and it will calculate it automatically. And here's room for notes. And of course you have about the author section here. If you want to track that, you're more than welcome to. Let's say this author is from the Czech Republic, which I do not have here. So I'll go back to setup about the author nationality and I'll, I will add the Czech Republic. Now when I go back and click on the Czech Republic, that's how it's done. And of course you can track ethnicity and gender and of course you can always edit, add or delete the ones you don't like. So this is the reading lock. You don't have to use all of these attributes. It is completely up to you what you want to track. I don't want you to be overwhelmed, but at the same time, if you like a very detailed 
tracking of your books, this is for you. Now let's take a look at the habit tracker. What I really like about the habit tracker is it is the spreadsheet is smart enough to actually recognize any type of combination you use. I don't know whether you like to track by just check marks and just check mark, uh, check off the days when you read or listen to an audiobook. That's fine. If you also like to keep track of the page counts or the pages you have read on that given day, you can do that as well. These cells are color graded, so right away you see on which day you read the most pages. You can use either check boxes or you can use just the pages or you can use both because the spreadsheet will actually be smart enough to recognize that one input is enough and if you check off the checkbox here it means you read on that day but if you also input the number of pages or just delete it it will not change it it will change the st statistics here obviously but it will not change it will not change the fact that you actually read on that day so whichever you like to use you can use both or either one of these tracking options the spreadsheet will be smart enough to recognize and calculate with it properly as you can see here here you have a little calendar if you choose the first day of the month which you start tracking on let's say today is the 5th of april but actually what i'm trying to say here is i am i am starting to track in april so i will select the, the first day of that month everything will adjust accordingly april and may june July and all the months will pre-fill on its own. These these dates will change accordingly. The calendars will change. Everything you can think of will change. And you just start tracking whenever you feel like you're ready. And of course you will have a wish list tab. A wish list tab is all the books you come across and you haven't decided if you want to buy them or not or you have bought them, it doesn't matter, but you don't want to forget them. So this is what the wish list is for. If you found a book online, you can go to the website, open the open the URL for the book, right click on the image and click on open image in a new tab. This will actually give you the URL for the image for the book cover. So you just copy the URL, head over back to your book tracking spreadsheet and click in the cell, go to insert image, image and cell, link, and then paste the URL and click on insert image. It will automatically load the image of the book cover and I'm such a nerd. The ratio of the cell is already ready for book cover images, so it will fit perfectly. Now, if you go back to the book and copy the URL to actually purchase it, you insert it in the cell and then look what happens. It will give you the option to replace URL with its title. Well, I want to do that, so I'll go ahead and click on yes. And now I will actually see the title of the book. You can click on it and go to the website here you go purchase it and here you can also track whether it's you're just considering it it's pre-ordered or you already bought it again this is how you edit the tags you click on this little pencil here let me move my face around and you can add another item or delete any of the existing or just rewrite the wording here and what we have left now is the dashboard, which is beautiful. It's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. So here's your dashboard. Here's You choose the year you're tracking because sometimes uh, you can use it next year, the next seven years, basically. So you choose the first date and everything. Here you see I have no logs for 2024 because some of the data is pulled from the habit tracker, some of the data is pulled from the reading log, and I don't have any inputs for 2024, so it will show nothing so far. 
but we're in 2023. So here are my stats from 2023. I have actually some input in the reading lot from January, February and March, but I only started tracking my reading habits in April. So hence, I will only see April here. But when the next year begins, you will simply change the first date here to January 2024, 1st of January 2024, and you're all set. Back to the dashboard. So here's the overview of books finished, pages read, hours read, hours listened if it's an audiobook. And this part, these cells are actually pulled from the habit tracker. This one is pulled from the reading log. So you might see a difference in data here which is still correct. Uh, here's a little overview of how many books you actually have. Uh, the rating, uh, book, books by authors, nationality. The more intense the color is, the more books you have, but if you hover around it, you can actually see how many books you own from authors from that region. Below that, books by authors, ethnicity, gender and the co-pile rating as it goes, as it flows. On the left side, you will have your tags that you created or the ones that are already preloaded there. So the bigger the circle is, the more frequently the tag is used. Here's how many books you have purchased in those months and how many books you have finished reading, how many you have actually reread. Because in the reading log, you also have an option to click on rereads. If it's a reread, then it will be reflected on, on the dashboard. See, now I have four, it updated automatically. It tracks how many books you own in different, different genres and a little pie chart. And here is your goals. Goals are also edited in the setup tab. Uh, how many books a month you want to read, how many pages a month you want to read, how many hours you want to listen to an audiobook a month, or how many books a year you want to read. You can use any, some, or none of those at all. If you don't have to set a goal for yourself. You can only set some goals. Let's say I want to take off this pages per month goal. If I go back to the dashboard, it will simply just show nothing. That's all. And here is uh, my monthly, here is my monthly goals for books. I want to I want to read 10 books a month. And this is my progress bars, whether I have achieved or not achieved that goal. And this is for the hours a month. And here's your finances, how much you have spent on that a month, how much you earned by selling those books. And here you have a little bar chart to see how much you're spending, how much you're actually earning on money. As I said before, you can use some, any part you like, any tracking you like, any type of attributes you want to track. You may use some of them, you may use all of them. It is completely up to you. If you find them distracting, I recommend that you highlight the ones that you don't want to use, the whole column, which is by clicking on the letter. You can actually select a few. And instead of deleting those, because they might actually be anchored to a function and it might throw off the spreadsheet, instead of deleting those, you right click on them and then click on hide columns N to R. If you then, you will see little arrows here, which indicate that there's a, there are hidden, hidden columns. If you right click on it uh, again, if you right click on it again, you will have this option to unhide columns. So you can always go back to them. So if you find any part overwhelming, just simply hide it. You can hide rows, you can, you can hide columns. It is completely up to you. And the last thing that I have here is a little index page. It basically just gives you descriptions of the terms that are used 
and you can refer to it, you don't have to, it's up to you. And because I'm silly, I also forgot to tell you that there are two more tabs. There is the series overview tab, which tracks and automatically pulls all the data for series from the reading log. So this is an overview of the series name, the type, all the books that it contains that you have already logged in. I mean, I know that Hunger Games contains three or four books, I think, but I only put in two for this example because I want to show you that it automatically also pulls the progress bar. Uh, this one is finished, this one is at only 6%, but the overall progress is 53, basically, roughly. So if this contained two books, the series contained two books, then I would have 50, I would be at 53% because one of, one of them is finished, the other one is, I just barely started. And also there is a calendar that's also fully automated. And here you will see what books you finished, what books you need to return and on which day. And also uh, the books that you started and the day you started them on. Yay! Thank you. I love this spreadsheet. I think it's, I would say genius. But if you have any questions whatsoever, or you want me to adjust any parts, just send me a message either here on uh, YouTube or in my Etsy shop. I will also link my Etsy shop down below. I hope you like this spreadsheet because I do. Quite a bit. Have a great day and I'll see you with the next one.